Hello everyone, this is Leon Zhang at Analysis. Today I will present an nonlinear viscoelastic viscoplastic constitutive model for epoxy polymers. My authors are Wolfgang Klein and Ko I Ko at the University of Central Florida, Johnny Fernandez and Andrew Bergen at NASA Langley Research Center, and Wen Bing Yu at Purdue University. Our motivation includes Deployable composite booms may undergo permanent shape changes after storage. Polymer matrices may exhibit stress-dependent viscoelasticity when undergoing strains beyond 1%. It is then necessary to in investigate the nonlinear viscoelasticity and the viscoplasticity of polymer, ma polymer matrices. Our objectives are therefore develop a viscoelastic viscoplastic constitutive model for polymer matrices, validate the nonlinear viscoelasticity model within, evaluate the viscoelastic characterization of BMTF7 epoxy, demonstrate the present constitutive model's capability. We choose the generalized Maxwell model as shown at the top at the viscoelasticity model. It has n branches. In each branch, it has a linearly elastic spring and a viscous dashboard. A 3D shaping integral in the middle relates the diatoric and mean strains to the diatoric and mean stresses, respectively. Where G, O, G, 1, G, 2, and Psi are stress dependent functions, and J, O, B, O, delta J, and delta B are the instantaneous and transient shear and back compliances, respectively. I and Becker assume that all stress dependent functions remain constant over each small time interval, as shown at the bottom left. While well, we allow all stress dependent functions to be piecewise linear, as shown at the bottom right. Initially, we must switch the integration scheme between the forward and the backward Euler method. While well, currently, we just need to use the forward Euler method itself, making time integration accurate and robust. We introduce the Wormisa stress as shown at the top. We then choose polynomial form stress-dependent functions as shown in the middle, where alpha i, beta i, gamma i, and delta i are coefficients to be calibrated via grip recovery tests. And the sigma o is the threshold of nonlinear viscoelasticity. We can obtain the bottom equation using the chain rule and the change of variables. With this equation, we can relate the strain increments to the stress increments. Next, consider the incremental constitutive relation over small time interval T and Tn plus 1. We can relate the diatoric and the mean strain increments to the stress increments and the diatoric and the mean strains, respectively, as shown at the top, where tilde J and tilde B are related to the instantaneous and transient shear and the bulk compliances, respectively. We can then obtain the incremental constitutive relation by reorganizing the top equations, as shown at the bottom. The bottom equation relates the stress increments to the strain increments and the strains, where tilde C is the tangent stiffness and depend on tilde J and tilde B. So far, we have developed the improved nonlinear viscoelasticity. We can then simulate grip recovery tests using incremental analysis. Consider the loading path as shown in the top figure. Initially, we used the two-stage time integration. Specifically, we used the one step in zero second during loading, 100 steps in 1800 seconds during creep, one step in zero second during unloading, 200 steps in 3600 seconds during recovery. We used the forward or method during unloading and the backward elsewhere. We then use a four-stage time integration. Specifically, we use the 100 steps in one millisecond during loading and unloading, and the same elsewhere. We use the forward or method throughout the simulation. We'd like to evaluate which option is better. This slide shows the grip responses of PMMA where the black curves are experimental by Lai and Becker, and the red curves are predicted. As can be seen, four-stage time integration better reproduced the test data than two-stage time integration. Next, consider the predictions by four-stage time integration. The predictions for 15 megapascal and 20 megapascal match the test data. This indicates that 
the predictions without stress dependence are very accurate. The other predictions slightly deviate from the test data. This indicates that without stress dependence, the present viscoelasticity model produces small numerical errors. This slide shows the recovery responses of PMMA. Similar conclusions can be drawn from these two figures. Next, consider the predictions by four-stage time integration. The predictions for 25 megapascal intersects those for 15 megapascal and 20 megapascal. This indicates that when viscoelasticity shifts from linear to nonlinear, the accumulation of errors may cause inconsistent predictions. This slide shows the creep recovery responses of PMTF7 epoxy where the black curves are experimental and the red curves are predicted by four-stage time integration. PMTF7 epoxy is the toughened epoxy widely used in high-strain composites. We calibrated its viscoelastic parameters via a series of grip recovery tests and used them in our simulations. As can be seen, the predictions for 15 megapascal and 75 megapascal match the test data. The other predictions slightly deviate from the test data. One cause of the discrepancy is the accumulation of errors. Another possible cause is that the calibrated stress-dependent functions are not accurate enough. In the viscoplasticity model, which was the drucker prager yale function, whose yield surface is conical as shown on the left, we introduce stress measure beta which equals the stresses minus the back stresses. The yield function at the top depends on the mean and the misses measure of beta. Stress measure R related to the isotropic hardening. Coefficient alpha depending on the tensile and compressive yield stresses. When alpha equals zero, the yield surface degenerates to the cylindrical misses yield surface as shown on the left. We choose isotropic and kinematic hardening laws as shown in the middle, where Q, B, C, and A are hardening variables, and V is the accumulated viscoplastic strain. We choose the Persina viscosity function as shown at the bottom, where delta V is proportional to the viscoplastic strain rate, and gamma and N are viscosity parameters. The greater overstress F, the greater the viscoplastic strain rate. We use radio return for time integration. Suppose that we are in the viscoplastic domain at Tn. We in turn apply trial viscoelastic strains and compute the trial stresses. Reduce the trial strains along the viscoplastic flow direction such that the reduced strains and hardening variables satisfy all viscoplastic constraints. Iterate steps one and two to convergence. Derive the closed form algorithmic tangent operator to facilitate the final element implementation. We then use the present constitutive model to simulate the stress strain responses of viscoelastic viscoplastic PMMA. The left figure shows the stress strain curves of PMMA exhibiting combined isotropic kinematic hardening at different strain rates. As can be seen, the material becomes stiffer as the major strain rate increases. This agrees with the theories of viscoelasticity and viscoplasticity. The left figure compares the stress strain curve at a strain rate of 10 to the minus 4 per second in the left figure with that of PMMA only exhibiting isotropic hardening. As can be seen, in the presence of kinematic hardening, the material becomes stiffer in the viscoplastic regime and exhibits prominent nonlinearity at an early stage during unloading. This agrees with the theory of viscoplasticity. In conclusion, the improved viscoelasticity model along with four-stage time integration is accurate and robust, and better reproduced at the experimental creep recovery responses of PMMA than two-stage time integration. The prediction for the PMTF7 epoxy starts to deviate from the test data at a creep stress of 20 megapascal. The constituting model can also characterize viscoplastic risk dependence and combine astropic kinematic hardening. We will consider temperature dependent viscoelasticity and viscoplasticity in future work. Thank you. Any questions?